Walmart. Walmart bag dangles blue. Smiling face mocks the sky blue. Walmart bag dangles out of foreign made cars window held by the chubby hand of the child who doesn't know better than to never feel freer than now. Inside Walmart, where dreams come true. Sky blue unfolds possibilities. Mommy's face matches the advertisement. Furrowed lines gone. Silent earthquake of her tension about school supplies, plus dental care, plus shoes, plus the sewing scissors she uses to give at-home haircuts until they broke last night. And that is what they have come for. Walmart opens its doors to welcome the legions of America's working poor. Attack, demoralize, destroy, create and exploit the working poor. The parking lot is an American explosion. Red, white, and blue decals, lanky forms, and softball uniforms leap out of the back of trucks no longer made on this dusty ground. It's not that his daddy don't work hard, he does. About 60 hours a week right here at Walmart for substandard wages and healthcare offered at 40% of his pay because while Walmart's rolling back prices, they're rolling back the years to a time when workers were scared to death to unionize, to organize, so they didn't. Attack, demoralize, destroy, create and exploit the working poor. This is how you become the richest family in America, Mr. Walton. I think I got your plan figured out. Open mega stores in rural areas where industry has been exported in the deindustrialization of America to developing countries where mega corporations don't have to be bothered with the only thing left on American soil. Standards. Environmental, safety, health, labor standards. It's all so sentimental, Mr. Bush, because something, because anything is better than how they're living now, down there. Existence on family markets and cultural traditions, sustainable. So let's build something that's not. But back to Marcus and his chubby hand. He's living on a diet of refined sugar, preservatives, and white flour, affordable, with a sewing scissor haircut and a daddy that works 20 hours one day and gets laid off the next. Is that how we avoid overtime pay in America, Mr. Walton? Attack, demoralize, destroy, create and exploit the working poor. Marcus can't sleep at night in the bedroom he shares with his three brothers and sisters for the fighting. Dad's yelling and mom's crying in the next room, which are all the rooms in the paper house. Mom swears daddy has a mistress because the numbers on his paycheck don't add up to the hours that he's gone. That mistress, Mr. Walton, it's you. Daddy wants good graces, 25 cents an hour more. He salvages his pride to work for free that extra two hours a day because that's how we saw the other people make it, just a little bit higher. Mom yells, sign the card, sign the union card. So he did. They plant drugs in his locker, offer him a deal to resign quietly. He does, shamed. They took his life, took his livelihood, took his pride. He took his life. The only way to get it back, he thought. Attack, demoralize, destroy, create and exploit the working poor. People, quit punking the power of your dollar earned righteously, putting in the deep pockets of those who don't. You say we don't need the union anymore and you're making money just fine lest you forget that your wages, as all wages in America, are based off union wages that were bought with real war, real bloodshed, real victories, real men died for the weekend. So you tell me we don't need the union anymore, and I agree. We don't need the union anymore until it's gone. Yeah, we'll go when we're ready. We're not quite ready, I'm sorry.